We just looked at how temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy of the molecules. And there's another really neat thing you can talk about, which is that temperature determines the direction of heat transfer. Remember we learned that heat transfer, the letter we actually use for this right here, that's heat. Remember is letter Q, which is measured in joules. So it turns out the temperature tells you the direction of the heat transfer. So what this means is if you have some sort of material, I don't know, let's say you have some sort of box, and inside it you have some material here that's hot, and over here maybe you have something that's a little bit cold. Now let's say you have a wall here, then you remove the wall. What will happen then if you remove the wall? Here, I'll just try to sort of erase it a little bit here. So if I have something that's hot and that's something that's cold now, what happens? I'll just put a little dotted line maybe. Things go from hot to cold. And so this right here will be the direction of energy transfer, which means this right here will go from hot to cold. So there will be some sort of breeze here because you know there's, there's going to be energy transferring from hot to cold. That's really, really important. So you know when someone says, hey, you know, don't, uh, don't open the door, you're gonna let in the cold. No, technically you let out the hot, but that's a minor distinction, I guess. It's a good way to you know, act like you're smart in front of your friends or just you know, get beaten up, I don't know. But here we go, we've got temperature tells us the direction of a heat transfer. Now what happens if there's no difference in energy here? What if there is no difference in temperature? Well, then we have what we call thermal equilibrium. So we have this special word here, thermal equilibrium. Remember, thermal means something about temperature. Equilibrium means same. So this is the key thing we have here, is that here, in this case right here, we have Q equals zero. In other words, the temperature is the same. And if the temperature is the same, then there will be no heat transfer, right? Because that's the definition of Q here. So no heat transfer. That's really important. So in other words, if these two right here were at the same temperature here and I opened up the wall, nothing would happen because they are in thermal equilibrium. And if we leave two, leave two systems long enough on their own, they will reach thermal equilibrium on their own. This is the case if I pour a bunch of hot water into a cold pot, for example. Give it enough time and the two of them will reach the same temperature. We call it the equilibrium temperature. So that's really all there is to it. Now let's talk about internal energy. That's a different one as well. These are important to get these definitions when we talk about thermal physics here. So we have something called internal energy. This should define something here. So we say it's the total random kinetic energy. And what do we mean by that? We write it as EK, right? E with a little subscript K to mean kinetic of the molecules, plus the total intermolecular potential energy. Now what in the world do I mean by those? Um, this is because we have molecules and they actually have, we could say they have forces between them. So this right here, this would be EP. So it turns out we have a definition for this. We actually can use a symbol for it. So the symbol we use for internal energy, we call it U. U is for internal energy. You might think, why isn't it called I? I don't know, haha, <laughs> it's just called U. But it's still measured in joules. So we have this, and in fact, we even have an equation for it. We have an equation that says U equals, well, didn't we say it's the kinetic plus the potential? So it's EK plus EP. But keep in mind, it's the total kinetic energy of all of the molecules plus the total potential energy of all of the molecules as well. That's how we define this. So we have an equation for it, which is also really nice to use. Now, where did that kinetic energy come from? That kinetic energy came from the motion. I mean, this right here has come from, this comes from the fact that these little molecules are actually moving around. They're bouncing around. Uh, that's because what do they do? They vibrate. Uh, let's see, what else do they do? They rotate. Uh, they bump into each other. Uh, they move. So these little particles are doing lots of things. Now the potential, uh, that comes from the forces. The forces between the molecules themselves. So this is sort of where everything comes from. So if we look at this, then we have this internal energy. Now what's really important then is remember that the temperature is contained in this kinetic energy term here. So in here, we have something about temperature. Because remember that temperature, we learned this before, that temperature is related to the speed squared. Uh, so that tells us something about the kinetic energy. So this right here, we have a temperature term, which means 
uh, what can we say here? We could say that if the temperature rises, if temp rises, what would happen then? If we raise the temperature, we raise the kinetic energy, right? So EK goes up. And if EK goes up, that means then that U goes up. In other words, U increases. I'm using pretty crude terms here by saying go up. But I mean, if the temperature increases, then the kinetic energy as a result increases. And if you increase this, that means you must increase the internal energy. So that is sort of how these are related. Now, what I want to point out, though, is that the internal energy is not the same. Maybe I should write this down, actually. So internal energy um, is not the same as the total energy. Now, what's the distinction here? Well, I could have like a, a box, let's just say. I have a box. And inside it, I could measure the internal energy. I could measure the internal energy, which is the kinetic plus the potential energy of all the different molecules in that box. Remember, in that box, I've got all these little particles that are flinging around here like this. There we go. Got to have sound effects. So all you got, you got your little particles that are flinging around here. Now, why isn't it the same? I mean, total energy looks like this, and so does internal energy. But that's because you've also got this whole box here. We say internal for a reason. Inside this box is what we're considering for internal energy. Now, where's the distinction? Uh, well, what if, I don't know, I'm standing out here outside of this. So maybe I'm here and I've got my hands on the box here. So this is me just standing there. What if I take that box and I throw it? Well, if I threw the box, do you notice that I wouldn't change the internal energy because I wouldn't change what's in the box, but what I would do then is give the whole entire box some extra kinetic and some extra potential because of gravity and all these other things. So it is a small distinction, but I think it's important. That's why we call it internal energy for a reason. It's what's going on just inside the box. So ignore the fact that the box may be flying or whatever else.